In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can build proposals in your account, email them out to your clients, and collect e-signatures on them. There's three places in your account where you can create and manage proposals. In the events area, inside of each event, when you go to the tools dashboard, you can go into the proposals area there. Inside of a lead, if you go into a lead, you can manage proposals there inside of the lead or you can go to the main proposals area of your account and manage your proposals here. Um, at the top here, you can filter for proposals by name, date, or whatever, just by typing in the information there. Um, you can also use the stat circles here to uh, view, say, all of your proposals over, say, the last year um, or the last month or the last quarter. You can also view your proposals that are signed by all parties or still in these signatures. And here you can click here to show all your proposals. You can also use the up down arrows in the columns to sort your proposals by proposal number, date, the proposal name, client, and whatnot. To create a proposal, just go up here to the add proposal button, click on that. At the top, you can designate if you want your client to, to be able to sign it. So we'll add them as a signer. And here's where you can search for uh, contacts that have already been added. All I'm going to add a new contact right here on the fly. Um, so once I click on the save new contact, they've been added. I can then, the system will automatically number my proposals, but here I can add a proposal name and I can add the proposal date, which I'll add as today's date. Once I'm done with that, it, I'll click save. That will take me to the proposal dashboard for this proposal. There's all the information at the top I've entered so far. Uh, you can link this to an event. If you create a proposal inside of an event or a lead, it will automatically link it to that event or lead. But since I'm creating this in the main proposals area, I will need to manually link it to uh, one of my leads right here, James Industries Reception. And I will show you where that's located in a little bit. Here, um, I've already added one signer, which is the client. Um, next, I'm going to add my introduction or terms of agreement. Um, I'll just click on the edit button and you can either type that information in right here um, or you can copy and paste it, say, from um, a document that you might have on your computer or on, say, Google Docs. So I'm going to copy and paste um, text I have from a, a Word document here. And then once I've pasted it in, um, Planning Pod is going to strip out some of the formatting, but um, I can use the formatting tools up top here to, say, bold things or indent them or underline or bullet them. Um, once I've done that, here is my introductory information, and I've added my terms, my my uh, contractual terms of agreement there because I'm going to turn this proposal into a contract. So let's start adding line items, which I can do right here by clicking on that button. Um, I'm going to add the line item name, the date, um, the quantity, and unit cost. And the markup discount, you can make that um, positive or negative if it's a discount. And in the sales, the tax rate area, you can either set a custom rate or you can um, designate um, tax rates that you have set up in the settings area of your account. You can also add a description right here. And in a little bit, I will show you that settings area where you can set up the tax rates or the default tax rates for your account. Um, again, you can use the formatting tools for your description right here, and you can either save and add another line item or save and close. I'm just going to close it right here to save that. Here's my new line item with all the information, and I can click on the actions button to edit it, delete it, or I can add a thumbnail image to this particular line item, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to choose one of the images off of my computer. And this image will display both right here um, online as well as in the PDF downloads for this proposal. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to import some line items from a template. By clicking on the import export button here, you can first of all save line items you've already created in this proposal as a template so that you can reuse them. And you can import line items you've created here into a budget. But I'm going to um, go to the templates area here first to show you where you can build out 
um, line item templates for your proposals and your invoices. And you can see I've already built out quite a few here. And again, if you build out templates here by adding templates, and again, this is identical to adding a template to a proposal or invoice, once I've added them in that templates area, I can then import them on the fly so that if you have line items you use over and over again, um, you can use this tool to just import those line items into a proposal or an invoice. So I'm gonna uh, choose a plated meal, beverage service, some rental line items, and an event design line item that I've already created as templates, and I'm just gonna pull those into my new proposal. Uh, that saves me a ton of time. Um, so here are all of those templates now, and I can go into these templates and um, edit the information in them if I need to. So I'm gonna just click on one of them here to show you how to do that. I'm just gonna change the quantity for this particular line item. And uh, here is that new total for that line item. Now, a convenient thing you can do is you can group your line items into categories. So I'm gonna click on the add category button right here. Um, I've already created um, categories inside of my account, which again, you can manage in the settings area, but you can also um, create new categories on the fly right here. I'm gonna click one, or create one that's called food and beverage. Um, and I'm gonna add my rentals and food and beverage categories to this particular proposal. So these categories are empty. Let's add some line items to them. So you can add them one by one by clicking on the actions button and click on the change category option. Um, or you can use the checkboxes tool. The checkbox tool lets you do things in bulk like add um, items to a category like I'm doing right here. Um, you can also um, do other things with the checkboxes tool um, in bulk like you can um, change the markup or discount to multiple items at, at a single time. Um, you can also um, add or change the tax for multiple items at one time. And finally, again, you can um, move items, multiple items to a category, which I'm gonna do right here. Um, for each category, you will be able to see that there is a subtotal area um, for the category. And if you click on the actions link to the right of the category name, you're gonna be able to remove the category and you can also hide the line item totals so that the only thing that displays is the, are the category subtotals. You can use the up and down arrows at the, next to each item just to move them around inside of the category. And we're gonna go scroll back up here to the top of the line items area. And you've got the ability in the show hide area to basically um, show or hide certain things, certain columns or items on screen as well as in the PDFs. And there you can see the things that we've hidden. We'll um, show them again, um, but this gives you the ability to um, show or hide specific things and not only what's shown on screen, but the output. Other things you can do inside of each uh, category is add an additional fee, like a service charge, gratuity, deliver your shipping fee, or a setup fee. So I'm gonna add a service charge to this particular um, category and the service charges um, are by percentage or fixed fee. Um, you can also include the line item tax amounts and markup and discounts when calculating the fee as well as assess a sales tax rate to a fee. I'm going to remove all those and you can also assign these settings as a default and here is my service charge fee. You can also assess an additional fee for the entire proposal. So I'm gonna assess a gratuity fee for the entire proposal, and I'm gonna include a sales tax in that fee. And here would be the additional fee for that. Um, and finally, I'm gonna assess a, a delivery fee, and for my account, I have set a fixed fee for this. And you can control the settings for all of these additional fees in the settings area, which I will show you in a little bit. You can also add a personal, uh, uh, just a, a message to your uh, proposals, and this could be just a, like a thank you message um, to your uh, uh, prospect or prospective customer. Um, you can also add an image gallery 
to your proposal. So if you want to add some color and provide some examples to your uh, prospects of uh, your offerings, um, you can upload the images right here. And then once you've uploaded them, you can um, add a title and caption to each of your images um, just for uh, descriptive purposes. And once I've added this, I will just save it right here. And another thing you can do is you can attach files to a proposal. Um, these attached files, you can attach them from your computer and attached files will be included in any emails that are sent um, from inside of the proposal right here, which we will do in a moment. You can finally, you can tag your proposals so that you can um, do searches by these tags and you can also run reports by these tags. Um, so you can search for or, or run reports for uh, certain proposals that have been assessed particular tags. That's how you can do that right there. We're going to scroll up to the top of the proposal here. Um, and I'm going to show you in the leads area where, um, where, where we have assigned this particular pro proposal to this lead. And so here it exists inside of the lead and you'll be able to access it inside of the lead as well as in the main proposals area. Now we're going to go to the settings area and I'm going to show you where you can control some of the settings I was talking about in the financial area. First of all, the tax rates manager lets you basically control um, all of the preset tax rates. You can also here um, preset what is displayed on screen as well as in PDFs for all the proposals in your account. Um, you can uh, control the line item category headings or names right there um, that you can use inside of your proposals. And here is where you can manage the additional fees in your account and set up the defaults for all of those. Now we're going to go to the templates area and I'm going to show you where you can set up uh, reusable templates for your proposals. So we're going to go to the proposals and invoice templates area and you can add a template at the top there. I'm going to show you a template I've already created for a proposal and creating a proposal template is just like creating a, a regular proposal where you've got an introductory area, you can add line items, you can add categories and additional fees, you can set up a client message, an image gallery, attached files. And once you set this all up as a template, you can import this into a new proposal on the fly by going to the import export area. And uh, first of all, you can save a proposal you've already created as a template, but here I'm gonna click on this import um, template as a new proposal. I'm gonna import the proposal we were uh, looking at a moment ago, the, the, te the template, and all of that information has now been imported into a new proposal. Um, that'll save you a ton of time if you um, have uh, proposals or that you use over and over again. Um, I'm going to go into the proposal we've been working on. I'm going to click on the email button. Um, you can, it is already preset to email to the client, but you can also select additional contacts in your account. You can also customize the subject line and the body uh, message. And um, it was going to attach the um, proposal as well as any of the attachments that you have added to that proposal. And once that's sent out, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Here is my email. Um, I'm going to go into my Gmail account and I email it to myself. So this is what the email looks like and the person who would receive it. Here is what the PDF would look like for that particular proposal. I'm just going to scroll down just to give you a sense of what that PDF would look like. So now we're going to go back to my proposal and you can also just download a PDF of the proposal right here just by clicking on the PDF and it'll just download it to your uh, device, your computer. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at collecting electronic signatures. Now we did designate earlier that we wanted to collect a signature from the client, but you can also add signers by clicking on that add signer button and select contacts from your account. Um, to collect a signature, you click on the actions button and you can collect a signature in person via email or you can remove the signer also. So if you select the email option, 
um, the system will um, ask you to email it there and it will show you when the email has been sent. You can also collect it in person and this is if the person who needs to sign it is sitting right next to you. Um, here's what that on-screen um, display will look like. So it will display the proposal with all the quantities um, and it will show the message, the image gallery, and at the very bottom is all the signing and uh, 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 fields where the person would um, provide that information, apply their signature, and then once they sign it, they can download a PDF of the signed proposal, and everybody who is, um, who is added as a signer will also be emailed a PDF of that. And this is what it would look like. So inside of the account, it will show that it's signed and you can download the signed proposal there. If you email it to somebody, this is what they would see. So they would get an email and they would basically see the same thing that we just saw if we signed it in person. Um, so I'm gonna sign it for that person and then here is what that would look like with two signatures. Now say uh, we needed to make changes to the proposal. You can create a change order just by clicking on the create change order button. Um, we're going to give it a name, and this name will be seen by um, anybody who's signing the proposal. The description will only be seen by people in the account who are using this. And the signature process works just the same as if you sign the original. Um, and that's how people can sign um, changes to a proposal. Um, however, we do keep um, signatures of the original version so um, that way if um, someone decides not to sign the new version you will still have a copy of the previous version that was signed that is basically how you can use proposals and collect these signatures inside of your planning pot account but please do let us know if you have additional questions